Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. Uh, I'm Richard, and we've got some current news, breaking news, as it were. Um, most likely, about 100 people are no longer alive. Coming up next. So, we've got <clears throat> um, some sad news, very sad news. Uh, I am actually from Kentucky, or not from, but in Kentucky right now, as uh, many of you may know. And uh, last night, in fact, this is Saturday morning, December 11, 2021. And last night there was a tornado warning, watch, and then warning. Uh, the warnings are more severe than the watches are. And it was coming from the west toward east. We're kind of in the midwestern part of the state. It's quite windy, quite rainy, lots of lightning, lots of thunder. And needless to say, we were... My wife and I went to bed a little late because we were anticipating it coming right for us, which more or less it did. I don't believe anything touched down, at least not in our area. However, um, a place, Mayfield, Kentucky, which is not terribly far from us, uh, it did. And there was a number of tornadoes that landed or touched down, as it were. And they estimate at least 70, if not up to 100 or more people are now dead. And they were alive yesterday. They were alive yesterday. And death, we see from the scriptures, 1 Corinthians uh, in particular, talks about death being an enemy. Because it is. We don't, we don't want it. We don't welcome it. Further still, Jesus has much to say about this. But before I get there, Mayfield, Kentucky, this is an article from WLKY.com. It's a local radio station. Uh, website. It's website and uh, TV, I think, actually, not a radio station. Anyway, it says, at least 70 people were feared dead in Kentucky after tornadoes of severe weather tore through multiple states and caused catastrophic damage. It says the governor, Andy Bashir believes that it might exceed 100 deaths. He said, further still, city of Mayfield, Kentucky, was hit particularly hard, including a candle manufacturing factory that was opening at the, open at the time of the twister hitting. There was 110 people in the building, and the time nearly and at that time in the building nearly collapsed by the tornado. Dozens are expected to be lost from that. He said it might even exceed the 1974 super outbreak of tornadoes here in Kentucky. Now we don't have as many tornadoes as someplace like Kansas, um, which I'm thankful for. But it was a little unnerving. Uh, it was very. Um, yeah, just, just unpredictable. And if it's unpredictable for us and we're not really sure, um, it's certainly unpredictable for many other people, including non-believers, believers who don't, people who don't have Christ, people who don't have the peace and the joy of the Lord. Uh, it doesn't make this life um, <clears throat> easy, but what it does when you know Christ, when you're resting in him, you know that there's nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can transfer you back from the kingdom of light to the kingdom of dark. Once you're in his hand through faith in Jesus, you're in the Father's hand, you can't be snatched out. Because this world is broken. This world is passing away. Romans 8 tells us the whole creation groans. This is a groaning. This is what happened. This is this is something as earthquakes and famines, diseases, tornadoes. It's a groaning. This isn't supposed to be this way. Now, the naturalistic worldview says it's no big deal in one sense because this is all there is. Who cares? That's what they have to actually ultimately get to. Now, do they ever really say that? No. Not generally, not in a particular time like this, where people are mourning the deaths of loved ones. But a naturalistic worldview doesn't have an accounting for this. It's just molecules bumping around, no big deal. And, you know, I mean, we ro woke up to a bunch of ants because we had peppermint hot chocolate last night. The kids had um, little candy canes. And they had, you know, candy canes got broken and they're on the ground. And I found several piles of ants. We've already had ant problems. And I just squashing the ants. No big deal. You know, PETA might get upset at me, but I don't really care. Um, but there's a difference between humans and ants, isn't there? Nobody's going to come and arrest me. Nobody's going to pick it outside my house. Nobody's going to even give the time of day for me killing ants. The most leftist liberal, you know, Michael Moore or Al Gore or somebody like that. Leonardo DiCaprio that cares about the planet. I'm sure they've killed thousands, if not millions of ants in their day. They don't care. A rat, doesn't really matter. But human beings, we're different. 
because we're made in God's image. That's why the scripture, again, accounts for this. Materialistic Darwinism, naturalism can't account for any of that. We're all just like ants. There's really no big deal uh, at the end of it. Jesus said in Luke 13, Now on the same occasion, there was some present who reported to him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices, meaning there were Galileans in the past in Jesus' day before this, where Pilate killed them and mixed their blood with the sacrifice. Ah. And Jesus said to them, do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? Obviously, the implied answer is no. Because Jesus would probably cite Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He goes on in Luke 13.3, <clears throat> I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Unless you repent. And that's the thing, that we're all going to perish. We're all going to die. Whether it's tomorrow or 5,000 years from now. <laughs> Obviously not. But, you know, some people in our culture want to try and cheat death, you know, and quote unquote fix the problem, but without Christ you know, transhumanism and all that. That's another video. But we will all likewise die. But perishing is that that falling away, that second death is what Jesus is talking about. Or do you suppose that those 18, now this is a current event Jesus is talking about, a current event right now. Those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, were they worse culprits, Jesus says, than all the men who lived in Jerusalem? I tell you no. So the first people, the Galileans, they ask a question and then Jesus brings up an answer um, or answers it and then brings up another question. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. <clears throat> Jesus isn't sugarcoating anything. So the leftist liberals who are, you know, so-called progressive Christianity or they're deconstructing their faith and they like Jesus, but not really Paul, blah, blah, blah. This isn't kind at all, according to them. This isn't gentle, lovey, hacky sack, baggy pants, long hair, tie-dye shirt Jesus. You know, peace and love, bro. Just hang out. No big deal. No, Jesus said, those people died. And unless you repent, you're going to you're gonna suffer eternally. Perishing. That's a, the implication there is eternal. Unless you repent. Repent of what? Repent of your unbelief. Turn to Christ, turn to him, turn to the living God, not, not dead gods, not idols. So we have to talk about it and we have to deal with these things that are far more than just pithy whatever. It's sad. It's sad. And I didn't know going to bed at 1230 or so, 1245, I did wake up around 2 a.m. Uh, to large amounts of more wind and everything else. And we do have a basement and I was ready to take my children and wife down there, uh, although it's not a very nice basement. Um, but we thankfully didn't have to do that. We prayed and we went to bed. And I know that, you know, it might sound trivial or, oh, you're harsh. People died. What's wrong with you? Well, people die all the time. And Jesus says, I mean, you got a problem. Take it up with Christ. Talk to him. And you can. You can talk to him right now. If you don't know him, if you're disgruntled or upset or annoyed or whatever, he tells two instances here in Luke 13, the Gospel of Luke. If unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Not saying that you know some calamity is going to happen to you, but you will die eventually. 60, 80 years old, 100 years old, of old age, heart failure, whatever. Rona, right? Something's going to get you. But Jesus is saying, repent. Even in the, his first words in Mark. The gospel of Mark, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's then. It's still at hand. Christ is still present <clears throat> because he defeated both sin and death. That's the gospel. That's the good news that you don't have to atone for your sins. You can rather repent and believe in the God man, <clears throat> excuse me, who took on flesh and dwelt among us. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why Christmas is such a vital thing. You look at the gospel of John, verse 14 in chapter one there. He took on flesh. God added flesh to his godhood, his divinity, and became a man. And when you trust him, when you trust Jesus' work, his life, his teaching, his, his obedience to his parents, his solid work, his, his bowing, as it were, or submission to the government, at least rightfully so, they still killed him. 
people still hated him. They still didn't like him. They wanted to do little tricks and magician things and whatever. No, that's not what he was here for. Rather, as John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I know some people don't like that. There's different reasons why. Jesus can atone and does atone for your sin when you call to him. When you raise that white flag and you say, I can't do this life. I surrender. I'm done. Otherwise, you will likewise perish, he says. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. I hope you found this helpful. A little bit more of a relevant current video than I do. I do a series of different videos from um, talking about different false teachers or woke ideology, politics, um, economic stuff, just hard work, Bible, and, and just seeing how the scripture applies to this life and um, seeking to worship God, being against the world. That's the contra mundum, but for the world, pro mundo. Because at one point I was in the world. At one point, if you're a believer, you were once in the world. You're still in the world, but you were encaptured and enslaved to the evil world system that tells you to be first in your life, that tells you that you don't need God, that tells you that you're good just the way you are and the problems are with everybody else, not with you. Self-sacrifice is foreign to this worldview. Forgiveness, non-existent. There is no creator in the materialistic worldview. There's just slime. There's just explosions. There's just material. But is that reality? Is that what reality actually is? No, not at all. Not in the slightest. Because God has placed the knowledge of himself in everybody and he calls everyone everywhere to repent. So if you have not turned to Christ, he'll take you. He will. But that's the starting point. That's not the finish line. That's the starting point. Go ahead and like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, If you found this content helpful, go ahead and share it as well. I'm trying to build it and push it out to more people. The more people that like and subscribe, the more people that comment, uh, the algorithm, as it were, tells more people, tells more people to uh, watch this. And hey, you should look at this and so on. So my goal, I'm just a guy. I'm a pastor in a small church here in Kentucky. I've got a uh, a husband. I'm a husband and I've got uh, children and trying to live unto the Lord. So encouraging you to do the same. And until next time, we'll see you.